In this video, we're gonna be talking about this DIY home studio desk. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. In this video, I'm gonna be walking through how I built this home studio desk. And for those of you who are really serious, I'm gonna give you the plans for free to download. Just look in the description down below and you can download the plans for this particular desk. If you watch to the end of the video, I'll give a couple of extra things that I added to this desk towards the end to give it that extra mm. Anyway, if this is your first time here and you like this kind of content, all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plug-in reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get to see my future videos. Now let's get into this build. I started off just like you are, looking to the internet for inspiration. I found that Pinterest was a particularly good resource for this. I made notes about the parts that I liked and from that I was able to make a list of requirements. There were a few things that were important to me. One, I knew that I wanted my speakers to be on stands. I'd had speakers on stands a few years back and I always found it easier to control the lower end of the sound particularly. Secondly, I wanted the desk space to be able to fit my Mackie Surface Control as well as my keyboard and mouse without being too deep. Thirdly, and this was a big one, I wanted a keyboard tray that could accommodate my old and rather large Yamaha KX8 88 key keyboard. The challenge would be making sure that I could still fit my legs underneath without making the desk too high. Fourth on my list is that I wanted to be able to fit up to four rack units in arm's reach, even though I just have one currently. Fifth, I wanted to be able to accommodate my two 28 inch monitors. And sixth, but by no means least, it had to be able to fit through the door of my studio. And for that reason, it had to be dismantleable. The next thing I did was to start planning out designs using some software called 3DS Max. I do not recommend you use this as it's overkill for this task. I just happen to have used this for some years and I'm proficient with it, but for a noob, the learning curve is way too steep just for this task. A much better option is to use SketchUp, which you can use online for free. From my plan, I was able to determine a shopping list and then I was ready to start building. I started with the top which is made of two pieces of Merbau laminate. It was pretty hard to source tops which were 800 millimeters in depth at a reasonable price, but I could get hardwood kitchen benches which normally have a depth of 600 millimeters and join them together using pocket joints and glue. Pocket joints are a way of joining where two holes are drilled at different diameters through the first piece and into the other at an angle. The pieces are held together with a screw-like seam. It's really the glue that does the work here and the pocket joint just acts as a kind of a clamp. More about the glue later. Once dry, the top was sanded for a smooth joint. I then started on the keyboard tray as I wanted to test it as I went along. It started with two MDF rectangles. I cut a shape from the base to give more room for my knees and then I cut an opening at the back for cables coming from my keyboard. I then joined those two parts together using dowels and glue. I actually painted these at this point ready to join them to the sides which I varnished and then I joined it all together with dowels and glue. So I'd like to take a moment to talk about doweling and gluing because you're going to hear me mention it a few times. Basically, it's a way of joining two pieces of wood together, which is much, much stronger than using screws and looks a little better too. So come in a bit closer and I'll show you how it's done. So I'm going to join these two pieces of wood together. I've got some holes drilled already here. They're drilled about halfway through, not all the way through the wood there. And these ones on here that line up with those are drilled a fair amount into the wood there. Now, what happens is you take this thing here, it's called a dowel. It's just a piece of wood in a kind of a round, a cylindrical shape, goes into the wood there, push it in, and another one here that goes in there and then those two pieces line up together and they are held together by the dowel as you can see now just if you did that by itself it would be useless of course because it would be easily uh, pulled apart so what you generally do is take some wood glue just open the bottle and then you put a line of it where your piece of wood's gonna go well this is how i do it anyway who knows if this is right uh, some in the holes there. Then you push it together. 
and you would then find a way to clamp it. Maybe you'd put some weight on it if you don't have clamps or you would use actual clamps to pull it together and leave it for around about probably 24 hours at least before you start putting any stress on it at all. And that makes a really strong joint. Moving on, the side started as rectangles with a rectangular cutout. This will actually support the desktop. I then cut two large holes and cut between them to create the side's shape. Then moving to the inside, I doweled and glued a hardwood strip to attach the back panel and did the same thing with the smaller strip where I will attach a support piece for the desktop. I then glued and doweled a rectangular piece to add thickness to the sides where I will be adding the keyboard tray rails. And don't worry, this will make much more sense later. The back piece is just a rectangle which I cut two large holes in for cables to run through. It was bolted to the sides via the hardwood strips which I'd added earlier. I then added a rectangular piece to attach and support the desktop. This attached to the hardwood strips that I'd added earlier, but it also attached with dry dowels to the back piece. This makes it more rigid. Moving around to the back, I wanted to add a cable shelf. This is just a shelf with large holes cut in it and a cutout to fit around the hardwood strips I put on earlier. I then doweled and glued a small lip and then the whole piece is actually dry doweled to the back and sides. Moving back to the front, I made some feet using the same Merbau hardwood I'd used for the tops. I cut narrow strips and then rounded them off with a sander. I then routed a channel along the center to exactly fit my side pieces. Before I could add the shelves, I needed to attach the top. For this, I added some metal brackets to the front and screwed up through the support I'd added earlier. I then attached the top. The shelves were supported by an MDF rectangle attached by screws coming up through the desktop. The shelf was attached using small metal brackets. Note that these are slightly countersunk to avoid collision with any rack gear. The shelf was then attached. Having put all this together, I then um, took it all apart. This was so that I could paint or varnish each part. I then put it all back together and added the keyboard tray and my job was done. Of course, in the real world, it wasn't all as clean and simple as this. There was an awful lot of this. There was quite a bit of this. And then, as an excuse for comedic music, there was this. but I was finally able to sit back and enjoy the result. Now, as I mentioned, there were some extras I did outside of the main build. One of these was to cut channels under the desktop and shelves to accommodate the LED lighting. Another was to make an attachment for my microphone desk arm. And finally, with my daughter's help, we made a headphone stand. So I hope you found this guide helpful and that it inspires you to build your own home studio desk. I must say that I found it really fulfilling to build this piece of furniture for my studio. Now, if you have any questions at all, then please do ask in the comments down below and I'll do my very best to answer them for you. If you like this video, then please do hit the like button for me. If you didn't like this video, then make sure you show your displeasure by hitting the dislike button twice. If you like this kind of content, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get to see my future videos. And you can watch a couple of my videos by clicking on these thumbnails just here. Go ahead, do that right now.